This, ladies and gents, is Villarreal. They are a marquee name in Spanish football and in 2021 they were also crowned Europa League champions for the first time. But in today's video, we're not focusing on them. We're putting our attention on their B team who were having a really rough year in the second tier of Spanish football. But you guessed it, guys, that's where I come in. Because I'm taking charge of Villarreal B and not only am I going to make them better than Villarreal, I'm going to win them the Champions League to crown them the best team in the world. So this is the starting 11 we've loaded into with the B team of Villarreal and let me just tell you something, whilst on paper it doesn't look like anything special, this team has got so much potential, it's ridiculous. I mean these are the highest rated players in the starting 11 and the oldest player is 25 years old man, how young is this team? It's normally at this point I tell you who we can try to build this team around but honestly every single player almost in this entire squad is eligible for that to happen man, there is so much potential in this team. The only down Downside is there's a couple of players on loan to us, and if we do want to bring them into the team on a permanent deal, it will cost us quite a bit. Is we've only got three million in our budget in season one, and in fairness, guys, when you think about it, that's not that bad at all. So, like I said, guys, whilst on paper this team doesn't look that special, it has got so much potential, it's ridiculous. And under my management, I'm gonna make sure that these players fulfill their potential and then some. But not using the 4-4-2, guys, we're using the 4-3-3 attacking variation instead. And we are one again going to use wing play because honestly after getting through the team our wingers are probably the best and strongest players in the entire team and after a little bit of meddling this is how the team looks going into season one prior to making any signings that is but to be fair the only signing i do want to make is making sure hugo Navoa comes to us on a permanent basis he's 20 69 rated this one is an absolute no-brainer but we can't afford him just yet guys we've got three mil in our budget as you've already seen but his market value is 3.1 million so we're gonna have to learn some players out or sell a couple of players to actually get the funds to be able to afford it. Fortunately, I'm one step ahead because all of these players are up on the loan list anyway. I mean, they're all ridiculously young. So hopefully when they all come back, not only will they have improved as players, their market value would have at least doubled. And guys, as you can see, I have been pretty busy loaning all these players out. Hang on, why has Alvarez just been sold? He's gone to Malmo FF for three and a half million. Hang on a minute. I did not accept that transfer offer. Oh, I completely forgot he had a release least claws like pretty much every single one of our players man this is something i'm gonna have to keep an eye on man i can see us at the end of this season having hardly any bloody players left but we do now have six million in total so if we do want to we can bring in hugo Navoa and also a replacement goalkeeper for alvarez and to be honest for the keeper i might go for miguel morrow he's already on loan to us right now it'll cost us 1.4 million and he's only 22 years old and 65 rated this guy could turn into a bit of a beast and obviously i'm going for hugo you're going to know it one way or the other as well. We can absolutely afford him now that we've got 6 million in our budget. So this one is literally a no-brainer. Now, whilst I've been loaning players out and sorting their contracts out, I've also been doing some behind-the-scenes training like Victor Moreno is going to become a winger. He's going to turn into a 62-rated player. I also turned Rodrigo into a cam. However, his overall hasn't changed. I've trained Hugo Novoa to become a winger too. He's going to go up to a 71-rated player. He cost us like, what, 3 million? And finally, I've trained Thiago Jose Garalnet to become a winger. He's going to turn into a 62 rated winger. That's a little bit disappointing. But that's all I can do before I send these boys off into season one. And to be honest, I think we've done a damn good job. This team looks pretty damn decent already. But if I'm being honest, I don't really care how we do in season one because season one to me is just about laying the foundations for success for the future of Villarreal B. But having said that, I do not want to be where they are in real life. Rock bottom. I mean, if we can beat that, then I'll be happy. But this is not a promising sign, guys. Our budget's risen to 6 million again at the end of season one, and that only means to me that some of our players' release clauses are being activated. And it was our strikers, Alex Forez, his release clause, he's 23, 75 rated now, playing for standard Liège. Oh, go suck a fat one. We also lost Ruben Gomez, one of our backup keepers for 1.5 million. But to be honest, he's not really a loss in comparison to Alex Forez. But despite that doom and gloom, look at some of the improvement in our players. I mean, it's not as much as I'd hoped for, but it's still pretty damn decent. However, these stats are absolutely stinky. Our top goal contributor was 
Tiago Jose Goralnik, who got 10 goal contributions in 43 games. Oh my god, we finished rock bottom, haven't we? We actually have as well. We won two games all season. Two games won from 42. Jesus Christ. And honestly, it's no surprise we got knocked out early in the Copa de España. We only made it to round one. Am I going crazy though, guys? Or should this team be doing a lot better than rock bottom of La Liga 2? I mean, should that be happening? Because I don't think it should be. The good news is that with us carrying 6 million into season 2, hopefully the board let us keep some of this so we can improve the team even further. But one thing's for certain, despite our absolute calamity of a season in the league, the team is looking way better than it was at the start of season 1 and that is all that really matters. And guys, the board are absolute legends. They've given us 15 million to spend in season 2 despite last year's calamity, but to be honest, I think I know why. Because they want me to beat Raman to 100,000 subscribers and if you want me to beat him too, drop a like on this video and smash that subscribe button. Now back to business guys, I have gone through this entire team and to be honest, it's still a very young squad, very inexperienced and I feel like there's only two positions we could actually use that money to improve. For starters, we definitely need a stronger keeper than Miguel Morrow. I mean, granted, he's very young, still only 23, but last year we finished rock bottom of the league, man. We definitely need a stronger keeper in between the sticks. And we also need a stronger striker than Andreas Ferrari. I mean, he scored eight goals last year in all competitions. If we go and have a striker up top, they need to be banging goals in left, right and centre. Otherwise, what's the goddamn point? Now, I'm very aware we are using the wing play tactical vision, and this really does cater towards our wingers more than our striker, but our striker's got to be doing better than just eight goals in over 40 games. Come on, that's not an excuse. Now, you could argue that a stronger winger than Goralnik is definitely what we need. I mean, he's 67 rated, one of the weakest links in the entire starting 11 too, but if you remember right, he was actually our top goal contributor last year. However, Haisem Hassan is five ratings higher than him. He's come back off his loan move from wherever he was last year, and he's going to take two weeks to convert to a left winger. So what I'm going to do is send Goralnik out on loan and use Hassan in his position this year just to see what he can do. This way, Goralnik's out on loan. He's not losing out on game time. He's still improving. And also, Haisem Hassan is getting game time here and it potentially could turn into a bit of a beast. And this means we've got all of this money to bring in a better striker and a better goalkeeper. But remember, we just finished rock bottom of the second tier of Spanish football. We're not going to be attracting amazing players. We've still got to be quite realistic. What I have found, LAFC's Matias Borgos, 22-71 overall. I have almost certainly butchered his name, so I do really apologize apologize but this guy looks like a pretty damn good player and I've also found Juan Soriano from CD Tenerife who can play in goal he's 26 he's 74 rated he's levels above Miguel Moro man this one is literally the smartest move we can make I just really hope they're worth it guys as we've just spent a whopping 10.4 million pounds combined to bring these both to Villarreal B and whilst the transfers went through we completed the science training to become a left winger and as you can see he's gone up to 74 rated we definitely made the right move with this because look at this team going into our second year in charge of the man i'm just pointing this out there if we somehow actually finish rock bottom yet again there's something seriously wrong man we've absolutely got to do better and if our players ratings are anything to go by we certainly have look at the improvement this year now this is much more like what i was expecting last year to be honest i absolutely feel like we've cleared la liga 2 and this time the stats actually complement the improvement in the players 18 and 3 for Hugo Novoa in 18 and 9 for our new striker, Matthias Bogus, who I've still butchered his name. I really do apologize. However, I don't think we've made the playoffs. It's a very goddamn good team, don't get me wrong, but is it La Liga ready? I don't think it is quite yet. But then again, I could be very mistaken. We are in the playoffs alongside with Valladolid, Granada, and Alche. But Real Valladolid did knock us out in the semis of the playoffs. 3-1 on aggregate. I mean, I did technically call it, guys. We're a very good team now, but we're not quite ready for that next step. And we still can't make it out of round one in the Copa de España either. That just proves my point. However, next season, we may just be ready. I mean, if we get a better central attacking midfielder than Rodrigo, improve our defense a little bit, the rest of the team seriously doesn't need any improvement. We can just let them carry on as they are. And with us having 5 million left this year, 
you to take into season three. Who knows, maybe we'll have what happened last year and get a bigger budget again. And I was right, guys. 23 million euros is what we got to spend in season three. And surely to God, with this money, we can finally push for promotion. Now, I've been through all of our players' development plan, and there's only two positions that actually make sense to try and improve. The first position being our right back, where Lanchi plays. As you can see, it'll take him 49 weeks to become a better right back. I mean, granted, he's 24 years old, but that simply isn't good enough. Now, granted, Rodrigo's development plan does look way better than our current right backs, but I still feel like he isn't good enough to take us from where we are right now to that next level. And honestly, this 23 million needs to go somewhere, so we're bringing in a better right back and also a better attacking midfielder. So replacing Rodrigo is 75 overall Peke from Racing Club. He's only 22. I mean, this guy is literally the same age as Rodrigo, but way better. This one is just a smart move. And joining him is the fullback from Al Ali, Omar Al Halali, he's 21, he's 75 rated. I mean, this guy's levels above Lanchi, man. We've got to bring him into the team. And this was our biggest transfer window yet as we spent 19 million euros on both of these players combined. I just hope it's worth it. And guys, we've finally done it. We've been promoted to the first division of Spanish football. It's about damn time as well. From rock bottom to the playoffs to automatic promotion, beautiful. And we even made it to the round of 16 in the Copa de España. This season has been the best one by a country mile. But it's not been bad for Villarreal either. Eighth in La Liga. We've definitely got some catching up to do before we can say that we're better than that. But looking at this team, guys, I've got a very good feeling about our first season in the top division of Spanish football. I definitely feel like we're going to thrive quite well if we get the signings right. And as for the stats, guys, it's been our our best season yet as you can clearly see. The best thing is as well, the last couple of seasons, our budget for the second division of Spanish football has been incredible, so I can't wait to see what kind of money we're dealing with in season four. But I've been let down a bit, guys. We've only got 37 million euros. I mean, it's definitely more money than we've ever had to spend, but now that we're in the top flight of Spanish football, I did expect at least 50 mil. And to be honest, guys, this is throwing a bit of a spanner in the works for what I want to do with this side, because originally I was going to really bolster the strength of our midfield as well as our defense. Now I've got to choose between bringing in a better center back or a better center midfielder and honestly I've got to go for a better center back because in my experience having a better defense is better than having a better midfield. And guys I'm not mocking around this time I'm going for Adriel Sin from Athletic Bilbao he's 28 81 rated and if I'm not mistaken he's not a bass player and if anything that means I'm helping Athletic Bilbao out doing this. But ladies and gents he cost us a lot of money 28 million euros to be exact. But that leaves us with 6 mil in our budget, so I think it's safe to say that's our transfer window done. And I know what you're thinking, why don't I just sell Haisem Hassan because he's worth 52 million? Because right now, I believe he's much more of an asset playing for us than just us cashing in on him. However, if season 5's transfer budget is anything like this year's, next season, I may have to reconsider that. But for this season, at least, this is how we are lined up going into our first year in the top division of Spanish football. And this is actually our first time competing competing with Villarreal in the same league. So the question is, are we going to massively flop? Are we going to be on par with Villarreal? Or are we actually going to surpass them? We've actually surpassed them in our first season in La Liga. We finished eighth, Villarreal finished 10th. We're three points above them in the end. But I don't think we can say we're better than them just yet. I mean, if we do this consecutively, two seasons to three seasons running, then I think we've got a case. But for now, I still feel like Villarreal are the better team. I mean, we only made it to the round of 32 in the Copa de España, whilst Villarreal did make it through to the round of 16 at the very least. Actually, they made it to the semi-finals. This is what I mean, guys. We may have done well one season, but can we keep it going? But judging from our players' overalls, guys, our team has come on leaps and bounds in our first season in the top division of Spanish football. And even the stats look pretty good. 25 goal contributions for Hugo Neveu, 15 for Peque, and 14 for our striker. But what's even better, look at some of these players' market values. Haisim Hassan, 81 million, 42 million for Hugo Neveu, 41 million for Omar Al Halali. I mean, guys, if the transfer budget next year isn't that good, we've definitely got a backup plan. But to be fair, this team doesn't need much doing to it next year. I mean, we could potentially do with a better goalkeeper than Soriano. This defense needs improving just a little bit, but aside from that, guys, we're good to go. Now, we've just arrived in season five, and we've got just under 70 million in our budget, but guys, I feel like I'm about to make a very controversial decision. I am putting Haisa Masan on the transfer list. His market value is 81 million, and right now, I 
I feel like for the money we could get for him, that's a bigger asset to us than him actually playing for the team. And let me just tell you why. Because you guys can check this if you want, but in the last two seasons, he's only contributing 19 goals. And for somebody as good as him, that just simply isn't good enough. And when you add on the money we're going to get to him, onto the 68 million we've got already, not only can we get a suitable replacement, we can pretty much transform Villarreal B. And he's off, ladies and gents, just like that, for the total of 120 plus million, if I'm not mistaken. But you guys ain't going to believe where he's gone to. He's gone to Athletic Bilbao for 123.4 million. If I was to guess who was going to pay that kind of money, it definitely wouldn't have been there. But now we've got 188 million to spend. And ladies and gents, you better believe our expectations expectations have just risen like mad because once i've done spending that money on this team there's only one objective i've got in mind for season five and that is european football however guys in order to get european football we first need to bring in a much better keeper than the one we've currently got right now that's why we just spent 36.9 million on louise jr from rc lens he's 26 years old 82 rated levels above the keeper we currently got but we also need a much stronger back line that's where facundo medina comes comes in from Dortmund. He's 28, 84 overall. He might cost us a little bit, but I absolutely believe he's going to be worth every single penny. And joining him on that left-hand side of the pitch is Purvis Estupinian from Brighton. He's 29, 83 overall. He's honestly such a baller, and I can't think of anybody better to join us. And for the total sum amount of 81.1 million euros, we've officially sorted out our back four for now. And just look at the improvements those three signings have already made to the team now. Man, we just need a better left winger than Goralnik, and we are good to go. However, we've got 58 million to try and find a suitable replacement for Hassan, and I'm very aware that that's not going to happen. However, we can bring in a decent play for this kind of money. I'm talking about Andy Baranazia from RB Leipzig. He's 25, 83 rated. I could be wrong in saying this, but he's got La Liga experience too, and that's exactly what we need right now. But because his contract was running out, we got a bargain, only spending 36.6 million on him. The question is though guys now that the transfer window is done and dusted are all four of these signings going to be worth the money we spent on them? Or is the sale of High Sam Hassan going to be completely in vain? Well it definitely wasn't in vain ladies and gents we have finished second in the league man. We were 14 points behind Madrid fair play but still second in the league we got UCL football next year I mean that goal difference is definitely something that we need to sort out for next season but at least we know where we need to put that money. We also made it to the semi of the Copa de España. Oh my God. Ladies and gents, I feel like it's safe to say now we are far superior to Villarreal. I mean, we finished second in the league and they finished 10th. We made it to the semis of the Copa de España. They didn't. That says it all for me now. But to be honest, I am not even close to being surprised. Look how good this team is. Now, providing that next season's budget is good, we can make the right signings with it. And honestly, I reckon we can take the UCL by storm. And the stats are just as good, if not better. 25 goal contributions for Hugo Neveu, 16 and 3 for our striker, 19 for Peke and 20 goal contributions for Aranda Baranaxia. And what makes this even better, Baranaxia actually got more goal contributions in one season with us than Hassan did in the last two. At the start of the season, I was expecting Europa League football or Europa Conference League. I did not expect the UCL. I mean, now looking at the team, I can fully see why we've got it, but at the start of the season, I wasn't too sure. And it looks like Real Madrid are the team to beat in every competition. They won the La Liga a title, they won the Copa de España and the UCL, so if we are serious about becoming the best team in the world with Villarreal B, these are the team to beat. But there's that old saying isn't the guys, when you get Champions League football you get that Champions League money, and we've got 178 million and honestly with this kind of money we can take the Champions League really seriously this year, but we will have to be quite ruthless with that money because I'm thinking a better centre back than Adrielsen a better centre midfielder than Morel and a better striker than the guy who's name I still cannot pronounce. They're all good players, don't get it twisted, I just don't think they're good enough in the UCL. Victor Boniface, however, is certainly good enough for the UCL. He's 27, he's 86 rated, he's 6 foot 3 and he's playing for the bottle jobs. We've got to save him from that dead club. And following him in that midfield is Javi Guerra from Sassuolo. He's 25, 85 overall and just like Boniface, his contract's actually running out. We got so lucky with these pair. But I didn't realise how lucky I was as we've only had 
to spend 113.8 million combined to bring in two world-class players. I mean, just look at this team now, man. Boniface and Guerra in this starting 11 has improved the quality of it so much. And we've still got 50 million to bring in a better centre-back than Adrielson, remember. We can't forget about that. And I want to bring in Castello Luke Bar. He's only 25, 85 overall. The problem is he's worth between 77 and 61.6 million. So if this deal is to go through, I feel like we've got to give them somebody in return too. So I'm going to offer them Adrielson alongside 40 mil. And it just makes sense considering Adrielson's the player I want to replace him with anyway. Come on, Poch, accept this first time. You want a bit more money? Oh, come on, man. Play the game. 43.6 alongside Adrielson. Accept it, you fraud. And he's accepting it. Oh, thank God. God for that. I genuinely thought he wasn't going to have it then, but there we go. And there he is, guys, in the Villarreal B jersey. I never thought I'd see Castello Luke Bar playing for Villarreal B, but a lot of stuff in this video has happened that I never thought I'd see. Such as Villarreal B making it to the UCL. We are in Group B alongside my favourite team by Leverkusen, Obi Salzburg and Jung Boys. And honestly, Obi Salzburg made the final last year, so this is going to be a pretty tricky group to get out of. But I believe with the signings that we've made this year, not only can we get out of that group stage, we can definitely get to at least the quarterfinals. Now, I don't know yet how we're done in the UCL, but we are once again in the top four in the league, and we still finished above our counterpart, Villarreal. And this time, we've won the Super Cup and beating Real Madrid to do it. Oh my God, we are actually competing with the team that won the Champions League last year. We are on that level now. We did, however, get knocked out by Girona in the quarters of the Copa de España. Villarreal beat Real Madrid too, though that is isn't good. They also went on to win the Copa de España. Oh, come on, man. Give us a break. As soon as we win something, they bloody do. But there's still a chance we could add another trophy to our cabinet this year as we are through to the round of 16 after finishing second in Group B. And we just about get past Roma in the round of 16. And we just about get past Leipzig in the quarters. We could be playing Bayern, Chelsea or Juve. And honestly, none of those teams seem appealing to me. But we drew against Bayern nonetheless and got flat in 6-2 on aggregate. Jesus Christ. I mean, we've beaten Real Madrid this year to win the Super Cup. Surely we could pull up a bigger fight against Bayern. And looking at the team confirms it, guys. There's no way Bayern Munich are 6-2 better than us over two legs. There's just no shot. But then you look at the stats and you think, how the hell have we done as well as we have this year? Because they're not that spectacular when you think about it. I mean, we spent how much on Victor Boniface? He got 16 goal contributions and 41 games. Maybe we need to change our tactics. I mean, originally we used wing play because our wingers were the best players in the team maybe we should consider using the gay compress now because the entire team is actually world class at this point we're gonna give it a go for a season all i know is that going into next year we are gonna have to be insanely ruthless by the looks of it if we want to go to that next level and win the la liga title and of course try to win the ucl but ladies and gents as we head into the new season with villarreal b i have just signed a player that is absolutely gonna take us to that next level We've just spent 150 million euros to sign Arda Gula on a five-year deal. A former Real Madrid wonder kid in this career mode say now is a Villarreal B wonder kid. Now this leaves us 80 million in our budget from the original 235 and if possible I'd like to bring in a better centre midfielder and a goalkeeper. As you can see they are both the weakest links in the starting 11. Now if I can't replace both of them 100% I'm going to bring in a better goalkeeper. So let's start with the goalkeeper shall we? Edison is who I'm thinking. Granted, he's 35 years old, but he's 88 overall, and he's actually won the Champions League, and we need that kind of experience in the team. And because Edison is only two or three years away from retirement, we only have to spend 17 million on him. And finally, the midfielder I want is Matt O'Reilly from Newcastle. He's worth between 79.9 and 63.9 million, though, so if we are to make this deal happen, we are going to have to give Newcastle a player of our own. So I'm offering our backup Cam Rodrigo alongside 45 million. I might be overpaying a little bit here but honestly I don't care if we can sign him. And that has worked a treat. Eddie Howe has said yes and we have got Matt O'Reilly services. And there he is guys in the starting 11 and may I just say now that we have brought in a world class goalkeeper a world class centre midfielder and a world class attacking midfielder I don't see what stops us from not only winning the La Liga title but winning the UCL this year. And speaking of the UCL we're in group H alongside Chelsea, 
Sporting and Geo Gardens I have and honestly it's got to be ourselves and Chelsea going through to the knockouts and it's surely to God. I'm just hoping that these guys were worthwhile. We spent over 200 million on them. They've got to come and clutch for us this year. And it looks like they have guys. We finally won the La Liga title by 19 points overall man. We finally bloody done it. And not only now have we become better than Villarreal, we've officially become the best team in Spain. But then again, Almeria did knock us out of the Copa de España, so that is actually up for debate. But this time in the UCL, we topped it pretty easily, only losing one game out of the six. And we've smashed Man City in the round of 16, Jesus Christ. But we only just managed to get past Athletic Bilbao in the quarters we could be playing PSG, Bayern, Napoli, oh my days, give me Napoli, please. But this is poetry at its finest, guys. We drew against Bayern and actually got our revenge on them, beating them 3-1 in the semis, and we're playing PSG in the UCL final. And of course, they've still got Kylian Mbappe. Why does he never leave PSG in these seasons, man? Man City, Real Madrid, and Barcelona have definitely got enough money to get him joining them. Why does he never leave? But I have to admit, the stats do look better this year. 22 and 5 for Hugo Novoa, 20 and 4 for Boniface, and 26 goal contributions for our centre midfielder, Matt O'Reilly. Jesus Christ. It looks like moving to the gig and press tactical division was the right move, as this is the team going into the UCL final. 36 years old, by the way. Edison is still 87 rated. This guy's a madman. And up to this point, guys, we have done everything we've wanted to with Villarreal B. We've got promoted with them. We've become better than Villarreal. We are the best best team in Spain now as well. But the next 90 minutes will determine who the best team in the world is and funnily enough that's our last objective to complete. There is a stupid man is on the ball, he's against Malagusto, we've won a corner. Order Gula to take, can we get a ball? That's a great delivery and Victor Boniface, the absolute giant, makes it 1-0 inside 20 minutes. What a goal! A proper rejected Boniface in the Leverkusen takeover I did but I give him a chance in this video with Villarreal B and look what he he does in the final. But here come PSG. That's a great block from Luke Boris. Still, hang on. What the hell's that? That's never a penalty, surely. Here come PSG, though. Kylian Mbappe is on the ball. Can we put a tackle in? Yes, we can. Good stuff. Esti Bananas on the ball. Can we see that run from Baron Axia? Can he get to it? Oh, Pacho is just too quick. Now, for some reason, we've just been given a free kick. I still don't know what it's for, but we've got Arda Gula on it. I am notoriously terrible at free kick. What the hell? I need to practice this in my spare time, man. I'm so so bad. Here we come again. Baron Axia is on the ball. I can see that run. Back post. Can we get it to him? Oh, that's a beautiful ball in Donnarumma gets there first. Here comes Frankie De Jong though. We've got, oh, look at that from Castello Luka. What a defender. Second half now and we are officially 45 minutes away from making Villarreal be the best team in the world. But here we come with Baron Axia. He could make it 2-0. Oh, we almost does. We got the second chance. There we go. I can't remember his name. Hugo Nouveau, I think it is. Makes it 2-0 inside the 50-minute mark. Oh, my days. Just as I'm talking about making Villarreal be the best team in the world, this happens. Hugo Navoa pounces on that, and it's just like that, 2-0. And here we come again with Navoa. Can we spot that run from Ardegula? Can he get there? And here we come. Played some nice football down this right and so we're going to come back. Navoa is there. Back post. Oh my days. If Donnarumma wasn't so big, that was going to be 3-0 every day of the week. But we could still make it 3-0 from this corner. We've already scored one. Can we score two? Oh my god, no way. Oh, you jammy git. Baron Axia is on the ball. He's on the right hand side. I'll tell you what, let's have a dink from distance. Oh, we just hit the post again. Why can't we just bury them? But well, here come PSG. Nope. That's a great corner. Oh my god, that's one of the best saves I've seen on this game so far in FC24. That was outrageous. Look at this from Edison, man. That is genuinely insane. Fair play to him. 36 years old, one of the best keepers in the world, and that's just proved it is. PSG goes short with the corner. They've tried to dink it in, and once again, look at that for a save. Oh my god. Here we come on the counter-attack. Guerra is going to spot Navoa. Navoa is going to come inside. Bonnie Face is there. Surely this is game done and dusted. There it is. Villarreal B are officially the best team in the world. I don't care what happens in the next 15 minutes. PSG are not scoring four goals. Victor Boniface making a name for himself on this channel, man. And there is the full-time whistle. We have completed our mission with Villarreal B. We've beaten PSG 3-0 in the Champions League final. So not only cement them as the best team in Spain, but the world's best Club. We took charge of a Villarreal B team who literally finished rock bottom in season one and we took them from there all the way to being the best team.
team in the world by season 7. But as I've said, that means our job with them is done. But if you enjoyed this video, you should definitely click here to watch this.